my poem is entitled In Memory of My Father, and you'd want to know who he was. Staff Sergeant George William Farmer, 381st Regiment, Company G. He survived both campaigns, Leyte and Okinawa, um, received a Bronze Star on Leyte, received a Purple Heart on Okinawa, uh, being evacuated to a hospital just um, two weeks before the end of the Okinawa campaign. Um, this poem is about him, but more than that, it is about all of the soldiers of the 96th. There are experiences that he went through that are common to many, many of the soldiers. And I only know about these because I was his son and did a little research afterwards. He didn't talk much about what happened there. I think that was generally true. Uh, it's just in looking back that I can appreciate what he and all of the 96 did. <coughs> Soldiers of the 96th, we are your families. We are your wives, sons, daughters, grandchildren, great-grandchildren, and all of those who bore your children or share your bloodline. Your legacy comes down to us in books, in movies, and in black and white photos that show ordinary men working, playing, taking a break, training in the snow for a war in the Pacific, and sailing thousands of miles to places that had no Kansas wheat fields, no Iowa corn, no Ozarks, or Appalachians places with strange names, like Buri, Dagami, Shuri, and Madeira, and with hills and ridges that we gave our own names to and would long remember in our dreams and our nightmares. Hen Hill, Conical Hill, Hacksaw Ridge, Big Apple. So many of you never returned, reaching your end in rifle fire, a hail of machine gun bullets, or an exploding shell. Those of you who did return were not the ones that we had sent overseas. You bore their names, but you carried dark secrets that you would not share with us. Secrets that clouded your thoughts during the day and spawned terrible nightmares after dark. Nightmares so real that you might mistake your lover for a Japanese soldier and find yourself shouted awake with your hands at her throat. We cannot condemn you later for drowning those demons in alcohol or silencing them with a bullet. But amazingly, some of you chose to live, love, and work again in the country that had sent you away. Look at me. Nearly 70 years ago, one of you chose to marry, build a home, and create and support a family of five. Only two of us remain, my brother and I. But we remember, and we stand in awe at what you accomplished. Despite your pain, you worked 72 hours a week for 20 years to support that family and watch its children grow. You stopped only when the oil company that sponsored you declared you too old be of service to them. Deprived of your ability to serve others, only five years passed before a disease took hold of you and slowly erased your mind and memories over the next eight years until 
until nothing remained. Your ashes sit atop a high point of land that now looks westward across the same Pacific through which you sailed to hell and back. Your devoted wife, my mother, sits close beside you under a stone that proudly pro proclaims your union and service. I hope to join you there someday. Few will notice your memorial among the thousands of other stones there, but it's my hope that some will remember you as we do here today. Soldier, leader, husband and father, we thank you for your service and your inspiration.